Hello and welcome to episode 4 of the Rue TV Reviews podcast. I'm Emmy and today I'm joined by Akian. Hiya, you are alright? Today we'll be discussing superhero movies and the future of superhero movies. We'll be discussing the first F- Spider-Man film and the latest Thor film, Thor Ragnarok. So how have you been, Kian? Yeah, not too bad. I mean, it's um, we're, we're making the most out of this situation, I suppose, being in a second lockdown. So mm-hmm. a lot of time to just, I guess, do what we've done pretty much this whole year. Sit at home, like couch potatoes, gain weight, watch movies. <laughs> Um, but no, overall I've been good, thank you. How have you been? Yeah, I've been alright. Um, busy with uni work. So what course do you do? I do philosophy and politics, so there's a lot of reading with that. But it's, mm. uh, yeah, it's an amazing course, but yeah, it's very um, intense, but rewarding. Well, uh, let's get into the podcast. So do you have any film news to talk about? Film news. Oh, I feel like I'm like this news correspondent. All right, cool. Um, yeah, so with, the, I mean, obviously I think a lot of people have seen uh, Avengers Endgame it being one of the biggest movies ever released, superhero movies ever mm. released, ever. Um, and this has actually been, I, I read an interesting fact. Um, this has been the first year in a, about like over a decade where there's been no MCU movies. Yeah. So that's that's, that's kind of crazy to think about, yeah. Yeah. So I guess what Marvel are trying to do now, I guess, is plan ahead for Phase Four, um, mm. and that's interesting to see what they're going to do with it because I think superheroes have become uh, very mainstream. Um, I guess everyone knows all the Avengers, whereas if in two thousand and eight, if you like ask someone who Iron Man was, they'd be like, <laughs> "Who's that?" You yeah. Know? So they're, um, yeah, so I I know that they're planning a new Doctor Strange movie, a new Thor movie, um, potentially a new Spider-Man movie, which is uh, very excited for. So uh, we could, which one would you like to discuss first? Um, I guess we could start, uh, go chronologically and start with 2002's Spider-Man film. Oh, yes, Sam Raimi's (laughs) Spider-Man movies. How can we not discuss the uh, the godfather of spider-man films <laughs> um so if you haven't seen spider-man and i'd be surprised if anyone hasn't seen spider-man the film centers on outcast teen genius peter parker who develops spider-like superhuman abilities after being bitten by a genetically altered spider yeah directed by sam raimi uh produced by columbia and other companies but released by sony so that's interesting considering it's now been given back to marvel uh it's complicated it's still a bit complicated i think the uh they're still working on the rights issues with um spider-man i guess Mm. spider-man's like their crown jewel and sony and marvel are just fighting over him like a bunch of babies (laughs) but i think it's like a i think sony still owns spider-man but the film rights go to the mcu but then sony Mm. get a huge sum of the film rights i don't know it's it's all complicated it's yeah very weird yeah. Film studios, they're very greedy. <laughs> they are. I mean, it's interesting that the one, so the next Spider Man film that's potentially coming out uh, in December of next year, allegedly, we'll see how that goes, um, it's meant to be a co production between Sony and Marvel, but then after that, it's unclear who owns Spider Man. Um, yeah, I, th- I think especially with um, how big and how like rich the MCU is becoming. Mm. Well, not even the MCU, Disney, to be fair, because they technically own Marvel Studios. Uh, yeah. Disney just buying Fox <laughs> Studio. They're just as buying well, everything, pretty much. They're, they're, they're basically, they're literally just buying it. They're like collecting like Infinity Stones, but the <laughs> Infinity Stones are like film studios for Disney. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy. The Avengers series just essentially foreshadowed that Disney has become Thanos in a way. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, I, I mean with all these marvel movies that they, they are very you know they're, they're big blockbuster movies and they come out every year but i think the reason why i fell in love with superhero movies was because of sam raimi's spider-man particularly the mm. first one even though the second one is very very good and yeah. some people think it's better than the first one mm. um i i still love the 2002 spider-man movie yeah. i think it's amazing 
Yeah, and I mean, it took them like 40 years since the re release of the first Spider Man comic to make a live action film of it, but they wanted to since like the 80s. So. Yeah. And they wanted to do it right. They considered too many directors to mention, including David Fincher, which is oh, yeah. so bizarre. Yeah, that, that'd be a bit of a weird one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't know how that would be on screen. That, that'd be a very weird Spider-Man movie. Yeah, it would definitely be a lot darker than <laughs> the current one. Uh, um. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Sam Raimi, I think um, the reason why I loved his Spider-Man movies was he genuinely like cared about the character of Peter Parker. And, and it was like... Uh, it was a Peter Parker story first and a Spider-Man movie second. Yeah, I was thinking something similar that I love how all the Spider-Man films are, they're superhero films, but they're also just like coming of age stories. Um, I mean, everyone loves their coming of age story, you know. It's Especially like yeah. the recent Marvel ones are really, I mean, they try and be like relatable and talk about like memes and stuff in a way. I don't know, they're really aimed at today's teenage audience but like more than the other films were and it's kind of weird but I like how they're kind of fun yeah I mean for me I feel like the Raimi movies and the MCU films um, mm. they deliver fan service in very different ways yeah. um, I understand that like movies have to change and like the whole uh, we live in a different culture we live in a digital age everyone like I don't know, I feel like we've become a bit, I want to say dumb as a society, but we've become very, like, a bit silly. And <laughs> I think that as soon as we get a little bit of fan service, we just love that yeah. straight away. Um, but with the Raimi movies, they did it very subtly. Um, mm. And I think with Sam Raimi's movies, he didn't, like, rush anything. Well, his first two movies, he just took his time developing a story and the characters... The third one is a bit debatable, <laughs> that one. I'm not really a big fan of Spider-Man 3, no. but I love and hate it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, the first one was just a masterpiece because it was so... The premise of the movie was very simple, mm. but sometimes less means more, and I feel like some of these superhero movies need to adapt that. Yeah. Then again, there's a lot of exposition in this one that they go to columbia university and there's a spider and he gets bitten by the spider and i don't know i mean it's weird that the marvel films completely take out the origin story of spider-man but then in yeah. this film it's maybe that's because i am watching it from a from today's perspective i'm like i know this already i think that's the thing that yeah. and, and you raise a really like good point is um we've we know spider-man's origin story but i guess back then not a lot of people knew about oh i mean i guess people have known about spider-man but not like how he's known today yeah and so i think he had a big job on his hands and i feel like yeah the ex the, the whole origin story did drag a little bit but it was done out of necessity to kind of like kickstart who peter parker is and who his loved ones are, and yeah. I think he does a pretty good job. Some of the stuff's a bit cringy, but, you know, <laughs> 2002, 2000 movies are very... You look back at them and they're like, they haven't really aged well. Some haven't, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another thing, I definitely noticed how, like, extravagant the film is, and I kind of forgot. There's just some really, like, the scenes where he um, he wants to buy a car to impress MJ, so he becomes yeah. like an underground wrestler, and it's yeah. the most extravagant set, and it's so crazy. And it, I just forgot how absolutely wacky those films are. Yeah, and um, what's his name? Um, I think it's is it Macho Man. I don't know if you watch WWE, but Macho Man Randy Savage, like he made oh, yeah. an appearance. Like he he was the um, the wrestler that he was, I guess, fighting in the movie. I was like, that's so weird. <laughs> um, but I think that's what I like about those movies, though, is that you have, like, these really weird, random events happening in the movie. Yeah. And um, I, I, it did happen in the comics, to be fair, as well, so mm. it is a little bit accurate. I mean, I guess the we think this film is a bit wacky, but it's probably um, downplaying what was actually in the comics, because obviously with comics you can actually probably do more than you can with cinema, because, you know, you can draw whatever you want. Yeah, and but then there's also like some very like beautiful moments that are quite not so comic booky, but just 
very everyday normal life like yeah. um you know peter having uh you know struggles talking to mary jane mm. him being like this angsty teen this nerdy guy who can't seem to fit in anywhere um and especially aunt may and uncle ben how like i love the dynamics yeah. uh, you know between them and the, every time like they're all in a scene together it's um that's the best bits of the Raimi movies is they had a lot of heart yeah whereas I feel like with the um uh, and I I love all the Spider-Man I love like Andrew Garfield's depiction of Spider-Man mm. Tom Holland's is good for the MCU but I feel like the um the Holland movies don't have the heart that the Raimi movies did yeah um but I guess it makes sense for the MCU in general <laughs> yeah I mean because arguably this film has some a lot darker moments especially there's kind of a subplot about how mary jane lives with her dad who's kind of an alcoholic or i think um, yeah yeah and then her mum died and it's all i mean there's a lot of like arguing and shouting and she leaves home a lot and stuff like that so yeah it's definitely it's interesting to see how things have changed and i think it's definitely appealing to a different audience maybe like i mean it's probably appealing to younger kids as well I think so and even yeah like with characters like Mary Jane Harry Osborne as well and his need to always um you know live up to his father's expectations and try to be that son that you know his dad can be proud of mm. that's something that is so um deep for a comic book movie to yeah. tackle yet that he like Raimi manages to balance it out perfectly and and not make it feel too serious yeah um but yeah I mean the dynamics between Harry Osborne uh t you know I was gonna say Tobey Maguire uh Peter Parker and um and and the Green Goblin um mm. who is played by um what's his name um Willem Dafoe what oh, Willem Dafoe he <laughs> nailed that role he was he was awesome in that movie yeah um but the dynamics between them and it was just there was always so much tension yeah in those scenes and I just yeah like I just look back at the first Spider-Man movie and think wow like they don't do it like this anymore sometimes yeah as you found out that Willem Dafoe performed 90% of his own stunts in this film that's crazy yeah and they because they had to like remake the costume as well because he tried it on he was like now nah, I'm gonna do my own stunts, so you need to like streamline it a bit. So they actually made it like thinner. I think that's pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, it was like a a Power Ranger looking costume. So <laughs> yeah, it's like so. skin tight, athletic type of thing. I mean, even like Spider Man's like, you know, um, suit looked a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't know. It just like because they changed it a lot to be fair in the um in the second movie mm. with the webbing and but i i mean i'd like to think that with the um the raimi movies there was no like i guess expectation um mm. with it um because it wasn't like a um it wasn't like a continuity of like an extended universe it was like its own movie mm. there was no like um he didn't have to like set it up for the next movie. It could have easily just been a, a movie in itself. I, I think that's the beauty of um, the Raimi movies, um, is that he didn't need to set up like a Spider-Man movie that tackles, I don't know, something to do with Doctor Strange or mm. the next Avengers movie. It was just its own thing. Yeah. The bridge scene as well. Oh, the bridge scene, that's such a good scene. I think that's the scene where like the people of New York start throwing trash at the Green Goblin. Apparently yeah. they added that in. So they filmed the whole film and then um 9/11 happened in the end of 2001. So then they added that part where the people are throwing trash at the Green Goblin saying like this is New York and you can't win. Apparently they added mm. that to reflect like reflect the city's sense of like unity and patriotism. And that's the thing, that he, like you just mentioning that, I guess that just goes to show how much Raimi, I guess, cares, not yeah. just about Spider-Man, but even where Spider-Man's from. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, I feel, I feel, to be fair, I feel like the Holland movies as well, um, they mm. kind of uh, show the, I guess, the New York feel. Yeah, it just shows that he's... Um, 
an everyday person who you know he puts on this mask and he's he's like this opposite like confident you know superhero and sometimes even those superheroes need help from everyday people yeah and it goes to show that you know he's not a god you know he's just an he's just a normal guy trying to do the right thing mm. um i i love that scene i mean yeah it's a little bit cheesy but still it's you take it with a pinch of salt and it's yeah. um i'm just reminiscing right now <laughs> about how good this movie is um it's crazy to think like how he managed to do all these like the the whole choreography of mm-hmm. these action scenes well, when green screen wasn't as good as what it was yeah. and there was no like he didn't really like to use much cgi and all the costumes were all normal mm. you know there was no like special effects like with the lenses yeah. and like the whole deadpool thing or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is he it, it's just it's crazy to think how much effort went into these movies and i feel like we're forgetting them and um we need to remember why we love superhero movies it's because of that yeah definitely i feel like the in in phase one of the the marvel movies it was a kind of a breath of fresh air because we've never experienced like this connected universe before so when Mm. the first avengers movie hit theaters that was that was like a big like thing like we've never seen all the same superheroes in the same you know screen like sharing action scenes together communicating with each other and that was that was a big deal yeah Um, definitely fast forward to now and we're just like we want more avengers like th- that's not enough we we want more and more people yeah um, it's like if there's a standalone superhero film people still expect another marvel character to be in it and it's exactly. really strange i think I th- speaking of strange let's uh <laughs> jump to the doctor strange uh new movie no that was a good segue that was great <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean like you just mentioned that like people want like these marvel characters to appear in solo movies and and this new doctor strange movie that they're making uh i don't know if you've heard about this but the casting um i know i know like there's certain characters that are gonna make a appearance in this so scarlet witch for example um doesn't doctor strange have a cameo in Thor Ragnarok. He does, and that was like so. That was like so so cool, like seeing that. The comedy in Thor Ragnarok is like just one of the best parts of the film. Hundred percent. I saw a quote from the director Taika Waititi saying that he knew Chris Hemsworth was like a really funny person. He didn't know why no one had played into that. Yeah, I think um, the way they handled Thor in, you know, just to make them a bit more fresh and interesting and. I think Thor Ragnarok did a really good job of uh, doing that. Definitely something the MCU needed, especially going into this new phase. Um, I feel like they need Mm. to switch up their approaches. I mean, I guess like everything's got to move forward and everything's going to come to an end eventually with all the um, series going on. Yeah. It makes sense that they're kind of rebooting stuff and recasting things. Yeah. I think that um, they're going to, if they are going to, kind of put these avengers that we all know uh, on the uh, on the streaming services then they're gonna have to i guess justify why they're doing it in a smart way yeah i mean it's that's the thing with the the holland movies is i don't feel like there was a lot of consequences with his choices yeah you know like even even the andrew garfield movies were pretty good with that as well like but even like um, how they, I know they had to repeat the whole Uncle Ben story, but the way Sally Field, who plays Aunt May, the way she, her, mm. her and Peter's dynamics were, was brilliant. And um, yeah. there was just, I don't know, there was just a lot of um, good things about the Amazing Spider-Man franchise. But I think those two movies summarized the, I guess, the tension between letting a director fulfill his creative work and his vision and then a film studio Mm. kind of wanting the director to do what they want i think that's where the mcu should head um in my opinion um is to allow people especially the directors to have complete 
creative control over the movies. That's why Thor Ragnarok did so mm. well. They arguably they are kind of heading in that direction, but you know it's Marvel. They're not going to completely give up creative control to the directors. But um, I don't know. I'm hopeful for the future of Marvel. Yeah, same here. I mean, I I I don't mean to come across as pessimistic with the Marvel movies. I do love uh, the characters and and um, a lot of the Marvel movies. In fact, um, but it's just going to be interesting to see how it's gonna be handled because I, I don't think they can do the same thing again they have to switch up a little bit especially for phase four i just don't want those movies these mcu movies to just be filler until the next i guess team up movies you know yeah i mean the fact that there hasn't been one released in like a year or around that has it been a year like <sighs> There haven't been any well, released this yeah, year, I guess. There, there hasn't been any released this year because I think the last one was um, Far From Home, which was, yeah, June last year. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they haven't released any since June last year is a bit maybe suggestive that they aren't really doing as many filler things. Um, I mean, I am excited for the Marvel movies. Because they've bought um, Fox uh, Studios, that means that they have the rights to uh, Deadpool and the X-Men, which is pretty cool. The Fantastic yeah. Four, which is quite cool as well. So hopefully those those yeah. characters can make a cameo and hopefully Deadpool stays as Deadpool, like a rated R superhero movie. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, will Marvel do a rated R oh, film? God knows. It's... Because um... mm, they do kind of very much work their films so that they're suitable for kids but then that doesn't mean that they can't ever do r-rated films but i don't know know, they they might be really kind of strict with it and not do any r-rated films who knows yeah who knows i mean to be fair like you know infinity war and and um avengers endgame was pretty dark and not half the universe died (laughs) um um and and also like kids these days like because I, I feel like kids know more like things about the world than when we were their age yeah, if that makes sense because of because of because like every kid that i know has like you know tablets and smartphones and stuff like that so mm. it's and and with the, we live in a tiktok age <laughs> where there's always like I don't know. It's just yeah. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I I don't know why they 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 shouldn't make Deadpool a PG character because he isn't. Yeah, that's the um, thing. It's just not possible. It isn't. It isn't at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, even something with Far From Home where they made fun of the, well, I I guess they poked a little bit of fun of how um, people vanished yeah. and then reappeared. Yeah, that was fun. It was funny, it was good, um, but at the same time I just thought, I don't know, like, th- does that kind of make the events of Avengers, in- you know, Infinity War and Endgame a bit, like, silly now? Like, I don't know. It's exciting times, though, for Marvel, because they, they have, like, because superhero movies are so mainstream now, I think, mm. I think they can do whatever they want to do now. I mean, they, <laughs> do you know, like, they're, they're just so, like... Disney can li- Disney literally owns everything. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit scary to be honest. It but, is like, but at least that means they've got the money to put into it, I guess. Yeah, especially with the whole streaming service. I, I again, that's more yeah. money. <laughs> I like that we're um, we started off like criticizing the MCU, and now we're just like very optimistic about it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what DC are beginning to do now. I know we're, we've talked a lot about Marvel. We won't talk about DC too much, don't worry. Um, <laughs> that, that could be on another episode. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but I think DC failed to do the whole Marvel formula. And I think they're, they've um, acknowledged that and they're going in a new direction where they're given directors creative control over the movies, which is good because you can see it with... Yeah. Robert Pattinson's um, Batman. Right, so I guess this comes to the uh, the end of the uh, the podcast. Thank you for listening. Um, why don't you like drop a comment down below of your opinions on 
the MCU and the direction it's headed? Are you a fan of where it's going? Or do you wish that superhero movies go back to what they were, where directors have creative control over their works, like the Sam Ra- uh, Raimi Spider-Man movies? Um, yeah, thank you for having me on the uh, podcast, Emmy. Um, I feel like I've rambled a bit too much with my passion for superheroes, but <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's been fun doing this. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah, it was great to discuss superhero films. So see you in the next episode, guys. See you. Thank you.